Okay, so you're interested in external GPUs, but you've done your research and you found out that Thunderbolt actually kind of sucks, especially when you get to the higher end. The overhead and the limited bandwidth, because, you know, 10 gigabits per second are reserved for uh, non-pure PCIe things, you know, the USB-C DisplayPort alt mode, USB, things like that. So you only get about... 20 to 22 effective gigabits per second and that chokes a lot of modern graphics cards so what we want to do instead is just use a straight pcie link and we can do that via m.2 and we've been able to do that for a while however it is very very cumbersome because most m.2 solutions either lose so much in terms of signal integrity when they have a non-standard connector uh, you know, M.2 is robust, but it's not meant for many, many uh, insertion cycles. Uh, or it's soldered directly to the board and it's a pain in the ass to, you know, have to take off the back of your laptop every time you want to plug in your external graphics card, especially for somebody like me who daily drives this kind of setup. So what we're going to look at today is this is a, uh, let's see, Lenovo ThinkBook, uh, let's see, TB, that's a ThinkBook 14, that's the G. 4 plus variant. This is the ARA model, which means it has a Ryzen 6800H inside, along with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but you can configure it in 16 to 32. You can get whatever size storage you want. You can optionally get a dedicated graphics uh, chip soldered on there. I think this model is compatible with the RTX 2050, which is essentially just a half bandwidth uh, 3050, so not too different. Oh, moving right along. We are going to break this bad boy apart. I'm going to show you how to install the commodity Oculink board from some wonderful fellas over in China that fab this on the reg because this is a very popular model of machine. However, this, uh, this and updated versions like it are only available in the China domestic market. I got this one off of Ally Express. That was harrowing. And uh, you can get other models, like the one I'm currently driving, that I'm actually recording this on. Uh, you can get those from the likes of Superbuy as well. I prefer Superbuy. But this adapter board you can get on Amazon. I think it's just less than 20 bucks. So, without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open. We are not going to need many tools. The bottom plate is held on by... I believe it's... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is Torx T4. Let me see if I can get this to focus. I don't know if it's going to cooperate. It might be too bright. But this is Torx T4. So what we're going to do, these screws along the back here are captive. So unscrew them, but don't go too far. Once they've got some play in them, that means they're unscrewed. However, these other six are not captive. You're going to want to hold on to those in a parts tray. I like the iFixit Protect Toolkit. has just about everything I need to get things done. This is not sponsored content. Uh, nobody knows who the hell I am, and so I do not have sponsors. Yet. Ooh, I could also consider doing a face cam. Gesticulating with my hands is, uh, you know, a skill I have not yet developed. You know, that's uh, this old Tony's area of expertise. So, we now have nine screws unscrewed. Six down here are, uh, these are uh, quite a bit shorter than the longer captive screws. So just make sure you don't lose these. They are critically important. Now, fresh out of the box... This bottom panel is going to be a bit of a bugbear to get off. There are a lot of plastic clips, and they are very easy to break. Because I've done this a handful of times, I have weakened the plastic, which means it's that much closer to breaking, but it also means it's not hell to get in and out. And if you are replacing parts, you're going to want a bit of that ease. Now, when the bottom panel is screwed on, it's not a problem. So we just pull from the back toward the hinge, lift up, pop open this, Eventually, it'll be an Oculink port, but for now, it's just a port for the uh, USB dongle, a genius feature that truly more uh, companies should uh, pirate from Lenovo. So, there we go. Machine's open. By default from the factory, the drive comes installed in the M.2 slot that we are going to use for the M.2 
to Oculink adapter board. So first things first, let us grab a, I believe this is Phillips double zero so that we can undo. First things first, friends, folks, haters at home is unplug the battery. Now you don't really have to, but you're gonna wish you had, you know, that one time when you drop a screw on the board and something shorts. And really what you should do once you've unplugged the battery is open the machine, press the power button, cycle the power that might still be left over, and now you're good to go. So we grab our Phillips double zero, Undo that, put it over here for safekeeping. That M.2 drive pops right up. Now, both of these M.2 slots, you know, AMD says and Lenovo says they are rated at PCIe uh, 4.0 by 4. So you technically get the full 64 gigabits per second experience that four lanes of PCIe 4.0 has to deliver. When you install the Oculink adapter board, whether due to AMD's more stringent requirements for uh, PCIe link negotiation or wh what have you, it might be a BIOS bug. I, I can't exactly figure it out. Trust me, I've tried. Uh, you only get PCIe 3.0 speeds, which for our uses in most cases is not going to matter because you're just getting pure PCIe 32 gigabits per second. And that for most devices, modern devices, is able to extract most of the performance. You are bottlenecked more by the performance of the CPU than you are by those 32 gigabits per second, depending on the game. Uh, you know, if the GPU is doing a lot of transfer between system memory, uh, you know, hard drive, whatever, yeah, you're going to be limited. But in the worst cases, you're looking at about a 10% uh, performance degradation on the highest end hardware. As you go down the product stack, it matters less and less. So we're going to undo this second M.2 screw, put that aside for now. Pop our M.2 drive where it shall live uh, henceforth forever and ever. Oh, screw that bad boy right in. And now comes the time where we have to move some things around. So over here, we have uh, RTC battery. That's real-time clock. We're going to lift that up and move it over here closer to this little um, rubber bumper. So you can see the there's a little circle here. Actually, the light's a little bright if I can pull that off. So there's a, a little circle over here where it says RTC. That's where it's meant to be glued down. That's in the way of our Oculink adapter board. So once that has been moved, we unscrew the M.2. Let's see. And this says M2 L4 screw, not M.2, my mistake. Unscrew it just a bit so that there's a little play in this board. This uh, USB port is still functional. However, if you want to plug a dongle into there, do it now or forever hold your peace because you are not getting a dongle in there once the adapter board has been installed. So step one, we grab the Oculink portion of the adapter board. We are going to slide it under the USB port and make sure to center the hole in the board on this uh, standoff, this post for a chassis screw that's built into the, uh, what is it, palm rest array. So once that's under there, we are going to screw this back in. You can see you still have enough clearance here for a wireless mouse dongle. However, be careful with certain wireless mice, especially these newer gaming ones that pull at 8,000 hertz or whatever. Uh, that can generate enough interference to generate uh, WIA errors with your external graphic solution. So trial and error, you are, you are on your own for this. You know, Just give it... Uh, Give it the old college try, but don't be surprised if it causes issues. So we now grab the M.2 portion. We are going to, like any standard M.2 drive, slot it in here, and then we press down. Now, because of that hole that surrounds the post, it should automatically be centered. But if you are having difficulty pushing this down where those two connectors mate, it's not technically zero in insertion force, but it should be pretty close. So press down. They will hopefully mate appropriately and make sure not to press in the middle here. See, the board's very weak because there's nothing on here. It's all traces. Uh, this is essentially just a dummy board. You're changing form factor, not, uh, uh, not specifications. So we grab our M.2 screw. Put that right on there. Screw this down. 
And really from here, we should be good to go. Word to the wise, the AMD models of this laptop ship with a MediaTek Wi-Fi card. Your mileage may vary with MediaTek Wi-Fi cards. I myself prefer Intel, the AX200, AX210. Uh, if you're on the Intel platform, you get one of these and it's Intel based, you'll get an Intel Wi-Fi card and those are kind of the bog standard for wireless interfaces these days. MediaTek can sometimes have higher throughput, but I find them to be a lot less reliable, especially with commodity wireless equipment, you know, the motor routum combo piece of shit you get from your uh, ISP. So be, be advised. We're all done here, minus the battery connector. Now Lenovo makes it pretty simple, line that up. From the connector, not the cables, just push that back in. And let's get this bottom panel back on. We're gonna grab our Torx, I believe it's T4. T4, we're gonna start with these longer captive screws along the back. That's one, you might hear some clicking as this goes by. Those are the plastic clips reintegrating. Now the reason this machine is so effective for you know an Oculink setup is because of that little cover right there. Not only does it have a full speed M.2 slot, a secondary full speed M.2 slot, but this makes it trivially easy. And when you pick it up and go, you're not exposing a very delicate connector. I say delicate. It, it's rated for something like 10,000 uh, insertion cycles. But a, a relatively delicate connector, you know, you're not exposing it to the elements. Not to mention it looks better. You know, I, I love a hacky solution as much as the next guy, but I feel a lot better taking this into a meeting than I do if, uh, you know, I get a little port sticking up right here. There we go. All right. I'll be careful with these smaller screws. It is uh, quite easy to cross thread them because they're at an angle. Not quite 45 degrees, but just make sure you're not giving it too much. Not only are they easy to cross thread, but these screws are quite soft. So, you, you know, you're not just camming out, you are stripping that screw. And that is really all it takes. So let's flip this bad boy over. God, he is complaining. I hate the transition towards plastic clips and glue in computers. But here we are. We boot him up. We have keyboard backlight. We're going to give him a moment. We did unplug his battery, so he's a little unhappy. Oh, but it shouldn't take long now. It, it might be doing like memory training to start out, you know, 32 gigs of DDR5. Uh, this model specifically runs up to 6,400 mega transfers per second, which is pretty speedy, especially for a mobile device. But because it's soldered onto the board, link training should take a little less time than usual. And we have a, we have post. So there you have it. That is all it takes to get an Oculink M.2 adapter board installed in one of these wonderful little computers. The hard part is really just getting it over here to America. You know, enjoy your month long wait time. But once it's here, uh, it's pretty much plug and play, especially on this AMD model. And I assume the newer 7000 series, the Intel model has its own quirks, but we'll go into that in another video. Thank you for your time.